Hi students, and welcome to today's lesson. I'm Ms. Bushnell. Today, we will explore the question, what objects can cause a solar eclipse? Are you ready? Grab your pencil and your science journal and let's get started. In our last lesson, we began to explore the question, what objects can cause a solar eclipse? We figured out that to cause a solar eclipse, an object must pass between Earth and the sun and block light and thermal energy from the sun so that the sun's energy does not reach Earth. We learned that Mercury and Venus both pass between Earth and the Sun. But when we looked at photographs of each of these planets between Earth and the Sun, we figured out that neither of these planets can cause a solar eclipse. Why do you think Mercury and Venus do not cause a solar eclipse? Do you think these planets are too small to cause a solar eclipse? Or maybe you think that these planets are too far away from Earth to cause a solar eclipse. What other object might be able to cause a solar eclipse? Hmm, do you think the moon could cause a solar eclipse? In this lesson, we will gather more information to find out whether the moon can cause a solar eclipse. Let's read some information about the moon. The moon is a moon. A moon is a natural object that orbits a planet or asteroid. Earth has one moon. Other planets, such as Jupiter and Saturn, also have moons. Let's keep reading. The moon is about one-fourth as wide as Earth. The moon orbits Earth. The moon is about 239,000 miles from Earth. And the moon is made of rock. I notice we read that the moon orbits Earth. Do you think the moon passes between the sun and Earth? Maybe. Let's create a model to help us answer this question. What additional information do we need to create a model that shows the relationship between the sun, earth, and the moon? Well, we need to know how big each object is, right? And we need to know if the objects are close to each other or far away from each other. Let's read more about the sun and earth to see if we can answer some of our questions. We know that the sun is a star. The sun is about 109 times as wide as earth. The sun is 400 times farther than distance of the moon from Earth. And the sun is made of gas. We also know that Earth is a planet. Earth is about 8,000 miles wide and 93 million miles from the sun. Earth travels around the sun and Earth is made of rock. Let's think about all this information. Where is the moon located? Well, we know that the moon is about 239,000 miles from Earth. And we know that the moon is much closer to Earth than the sun is. The sun is 400 times farther away from Earth than the moon is. How does the size of the moon compare to the size of Earth? The moon is smaller than Earth, right? The moon is about one-fourth as wide as Earth. So if Earth is about 8,000 miles wide, the moon is about 2,000 miles wide because 2,000 is one-fourth of 8,000. How does the size of the moon compare to the size of the sun? Well, the sun is 109 times as wide as Earth, and Earth is about 8,000 miles wide. That means the sun is about 872,000 miles wide. Wow! So the moon is much smaller than the sun. What object does Earth orbit or travel around? Earth orbits the sun. What object does the moon orbit? The moon orbits Earth. Let's use this information to make a model of the sun, Earth, and the moon. Here are our materials. A beach ball, modeling clay, a plastic cup, a large foam ball, a small foam ball, and two wooden dowels. How can we use these materials to make a model of the sun, Earth, and the moon? Well, we know that the sun is much bigger than Earth and the moon. So do you think the beach ball should represent the sun? I agree. We also know that the moon is smaller than Earth. So let's use the small foam ball to represent the moon and the large foam ball to represent Earth. The moon orbits Earth and Earth orbits the sun. The sun does not orbit anything. The sun stays in one place. So let's put each foam ball on a wooden dowel and put the dowels in modeling clay. We can use the dowels to move our foam balls and show the orbits of Earth and the moon. We can put the plastic cup under the beach ball to hold the beach ball in place. Now, 
where should we put each ball? Remember, Earth and the moon are only about 239,000 miles apart. And both Earth and the moon are very far away from the sun. So let's put the two foam balls close to each other, but far away from the beach ball. Great. Now, how can we show motion in our model? Let's move the small foam ball around the large foam ball. This movement represents the moon orbiting Earth. Let's use the wooden dowel to move the large foam ball around the beach ball. This movement represents Earth orbiting the sun. Both of these orbits happen at the same time. So, the moon orbits Earth while Earth orbits the sun. Let's draw a space view diagram of our model. We can draw the sun at the center of the diagram. Then we can draw Earth and a line to show Earth's orbit around the sun. What else should we draw? Oh, that's right. We should draw the moon. And let's draw another line to show the moon's orbit around Earth. Great work. Let's update our class chart. We can make a new section called the moon. What should we write? Let's write, the moon orbits Earth. Your first task after this lesson will be to update this chart. Remember, we are trying to figure out whether the moon can cause a solar eclipse. Let's look at our space view diagram again. Can the moon be in a location where it can cause a solar eclipse? Yes, when the moon orbits Earth, the moon can move between Earth and the sun. But to cause a solar eclipse, the moon also needs to be able to block light and thermal energy from the sun. Do you think the moon can block the sun? Why or why not? Your second task after this lesson will be to answer this question. In our next lesson, we will investigate whether the moon can block the sun. Let's review your tasks for today. First, update the chart. Second, answer the question about the moon.